Well, I want to thank you for joining us for Earthing Live, where we answer your questions with Clint Ober and other earthing experts every Monday. We will be beginning in just a few minutes at 3.30 p.m. Pacific. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another session of Earthing Live, where we are joined every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific by Clint Ober and other earthing experts to answer your questions live on air. We do have just a quick disclaimer before we get started that all of the information contained in this video is not intended to be medical advice. And if you do have any medical concerns, please consult your health professional. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us again. Uh, my name is Charlie Frank and I will be your host for this afternoon. Uh, we will be joined by Mr. Clint Ober. Now Clint is our founder and CEO here at Earthing and has been a longtime pioneer, advocate and researcher of Earthing and the many benefits that it can bring to our health. Welcome Clint. Thanks Charlie, glad to be here as usual. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and kick things off with our first question here coming from Zoom. Uh, we do have a question from an anonymous attendee asking, uh, actually letting us know they're still trying to understand just the answer that you had given last week about flooring in a new home. As uh, the problem with a crawl space that there's potentially wiring under the cement floor or that the cement or stone floor is not in concrete contact with the concrete pad or the earth itself. Uh, <clears throat> the problem is that it's not, um, in touch with the earth. It's not, in California, for instance, you have concrete slab homes. There's a concrete and then they build everything on it. But when you have a crawl space, the, um, uh, there's a big gap. So you're really insulated from the earth. And so it's, it has to do with the concrete, uh, and, which is earth. Did I answer that? Did I make that clear? Lizzie, okay. All right. Uh, so we do have another question here. Um, this is actually coming from, I believe this was coming from Facebook. We do have a question from AJ asking if earthing can be used to alleviate and reduce anxiety in children. Um, well, yeah, I believe so. The best way to find out is uh, with the child is just take them outdoors in the backyard or to the park 
or for a little walk in the woods, with a little bit of barefoot and a little bit of maybe sitting by the creek and uh, maybe a little bit of sunshine and find out. But I believe uh, grounding will benefit all children as far as because when you're when you're not grounded, your body is you know charged with static electricity, and you have all of these other issues that are going on. And just by getting grounded, um, the word grounding itself literally meaning return to normal. Um, I, I think you'll find huge benefits with grounding. Absolutely. Right, so moving on, we do have a question here from Zoom. This is coming from Daryl. Uh, Daryl is asking if there is added value to using multiple sources of ground at the same time, for example, sleeping on a grounding mat along with a pillowcase and using the patches all at the same time, or would they be just as effective otherwise? Um, what we find is people whose health is compromised. It didn't get compromised in overnight, generally speaking. Normally it's you know years of lifestyle or environment. Uh, or you know, whatever issues. But <clears throat> when you start grounding, um, if you have pain anywhere in your body, then you know you're, you have inflammation in your body. So what a lot of people do is, if their health is very compromised, um, <clears throat> the mat is, a, uh, is important because it not only grounds you by laying on it and you know, provides a source of electrons to um, maintain your body negative, uh, but it also has an energy field. I mean, Earth's energy field, which kind of um, <clears throat> you close couple with that, and it, it you know it calms you know the rhythms of the Earth. Um, it calms the you know you, you close couple and you start um, resonating with the rhythms of the Earth, and so that has a, a calming effect. And throughout the twenty four hour or through the sleep cycles, uh, there's resonant frequencies that we uh, know affect uh, hormone cascades. And the stronger those rhythms, the, the more they affect. Uh, the pillow is great because um, uh, I, sometimes, I, again, I don't like to get into some of these, but they're, they're real. Uh, <clears throat> when you build a house, uh, you know they, they put the wiring in the walls waist high to an electrician. And that's where the wiring goes across the walls and up and down to the outlets and, and uh, the switches and everything. And so when you come in and put your bed up against the wall and you put your pillow on the bed, you're putting your, your, your head waist high to the electrician. I mean, within 12 inches of the wiring and stuff that's in the walls. So <clears throat> I, I think that by sleeping on a pillow that helps mitigate some of that effect, a lot of that effect. And it's just, again, it's the calming. You're, you're, um, when you're sleeping on the pillow, uh, it's doing two things. You are getting electrons, but it's also that calming effect of Earth's electric field, uh, of Earth's energy field, that when you start resonating with that, it, it, it helps calm and helps uh, in so many ways that it's kind of hard to describe in a short question and answer. Uh, but the patches, uh, and by 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 adding those two, I think those two are you know if you're if you're basic health. But to add the patches, uh, if you have an acute situation, <clears throat> which every once in a while I will get one, depending on what I'm doing. Um, but I'll always sleep with the patch on it, and I have a pillow and I have a sleeping mat. But <clears throat> uh, I've got to recover every night, no matter what, because of my age. <laughs> so. But it's it's a very personal thing. Uh, if you have health, if your health is compromised, then and you have any pain. If you wake up in the morning, you're stiff and sore. Then you need as much grounding as you can until you go until you recover. Then the mats and the pillows are perfect. Yeah. Looking up from there, we do have our next question is from Shirley here on Zoom, asking if there are, is any additional research or cases for people grounding. Uh, who have or have had COVID? Um, there's a few studies or papers on the Earthing Institute that you can refer to, that, that you can go and search. And um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of reports. Uh, they're all uh, uh, anecdotal. Uh, we haven't done, we, there's been a couple of study, studies done, not in the US. And, um, but it's really what COVID 
you know, or anything else. It's really about your immune system. What grounding does most of all is <clears throat> it reduces inflammation in your body so that your immune system can do what it's supposed to do. And what the, earth, what the immune system does primarily is it restores the body, you know, and maintains the body, uh, maintains health. And if you don't have health, then something is, it's all about the immune systems. If you don't have health, something is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health. So <clears throat> no matter what the disorder, if you can get grounded, stay grounded, then it's going to put out a lot of the, the fire of inflammation so that your inflammation or so the immune system no longer has to deal with the inflammation, which uses up a lot of the resources of the, of, of the body. And then it can go on and <clears throat> protect against and restore and deal with all the things that we are confronted with. But uh, I would recommend reading the studies on the Earthing Institute. Absolutely. Right. And then we do have another question here coming in from Anne asking if it matters what type of fabric the sheets that we use are made of if we're using the Earthing sleeping mat or the mattress cover. Um, <clears throat> uh, cotton is always best because when you lay on cotton, it'll hold moisture. Uh, it holds whatever the humidity and the atmosphere is in your living environment. Uh, you'll have at least that much humidity to start with uh, in the cotton in your sheets. And then when you lay down, your body is perspiring. So uh, once you cover yourself uh, on top of a cotton sheet, then there's a uh, more humidity, more uh, perspiration from the body itself. And that's more than sufficient to uh, ground the body. The, the, the main thing about cotton is it holds moisture. And if you'll, if you'll notice, like if you're driving down the, or anything, you put your hand on where you've been sitting or even blue jeans, uh, you'll feel a little bit of moisture in them. And that's normal. And when you use the synthetic materials, they don't hold the moisture. Your body is still perspiring just as much. And I think when you're in bed, it probably still works fine, but the cotton will be more effective. Absolutely. Right. We have another question here coming in from Facebook. Uh, this one comes from Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth is asking if there are any particular grounding products that you would suggest for PCOS, this is polycystic ovary syndrome. And also uh, do a follow-up after that. I'm not sure if you want to get to the first part of this one first. It's a little different. Uh, I would use the patches myself is what I would recommend. And I mean, in you, if you have one problem in your body, you have a problem. I mean, everything in the body is systemic. You don't have a liver that's all by itself. You have a liver that's connected to this. And I mean, everything is all connected. It's all one thing. So if you have a problem in one place, you generally have something going on in your whole body. And that, and that is generally inflammation. So you need to reduce inflammation under any circumstances, no matter what's going on, because that will restore the immune system. The immune system will go, for, go forward and clean up these issues that are related, that have been brought about by the original inflammation. But <clears throat> if it's an acute situation, I would use the patches, but I would for sure uh, be on a grounded bed pad. Definitely. Right. And then the follow-up question she did have as well, um, well, she was wondering what would it mean if they experience a, a bit of a fluttering in your chest while you're in bed trying to sleep after using, uh, it looks like a universal mat under your feet at work during the day, but you're not grounded while in bed. So I'm not sure if that would be directly related or not. Well, I don't know that it would be uh, directly related, but if it's a flutter, it's probably related to the heart. And that usually is could be related to stress uh, and, and or any number of things, but I would highly recommend that you, uh, if it's a continuous thing, and if it's, if you can't identify what it's related to and correct the, uh, if it's stress, um, <clears throat> then you need to go see a cardiologist or see your, uh, you know, see your doc, get, see your general practitioner and then have them advise you what, what's best to do. All right, we do have, uh, moving over to our questions from YouTube here. So this one is coming in from Basketball Fan. I was asking, uh, you're letting us know he's been earthing daily. 
uh, apart from a very odd day off in a tiny way, just walking the last five minutes home on grass and the effect is immense immediately. And then did follow up by letting us know that they do have uh, neck nerve damage. Thinks that the pillow would really help. Um, but with that, I'm not sure if we do have any other suggestions for that as well. Well, yes, and again, it's, um, if it's nerve damage, um, you know, again, it's kind of hard to address anything if you don't know enough about it. But I'd highly recommend uh, being grounded, period, uh, whether it's just the mat or the mat in the pillow, because you need to reduce the stress tension in the body. And uh, the body is a self-healing mechanism. You had just remove anything that might be stressing the body. Um, and so the body can do its magic. Absolutely. I did want to give a quick reminder to everyone watching us here on Zoom uh, that we actually are not monitoring the chat too closely. We will just be looking in the Q and A section for our questions here. So make sure to post them over there so that I can see them and we can ask Clint. All right, uh, moving on from there, we do have our next question here. Uh, it does say, would grounding help electromagnetically sensitive people living in the city? Uh, yes, <clears throat> but I, but I want to address what electromagnetic sensitivity is. Um, <clears throat> most of all people, I mean, I've been doing research for 23 years now, and <clears throat> we have been involved with many of... Uh, subjects and we have much history with our customer base and, and just people in general. But the number one thing we have found for people who are electrically sensitive is they have an exhausted adrenals. And, and what that means is you have a parasympathetic nervous system, which you can sense everything in your environment, uh, sound, um, temperature, you know, uh, wind, any, anything. Um, and you can sense electric fields and everybody, everybody's sympathetic nervous system does. Um, <clears throat> but you have a parasympathetic nervous system that, so anytime the sympathetic is stimulated, then you'll have a little bit of a cortisol spike. It's kind of a fight and flight spike. And this is normal and natural because it's, uh, it's a part of us and part of all living animals and mammals, especially. And um, <clears throat> so anyhow, anytime that cortisol, then the first thing that happens is the parasympathetic releases a few hormones to try to modulate and calm that down, to give you just a few seconds to make a decision whether to run or fight or, you know, the stress is, uh, so you can manage the stress. And, <clears throat> and if you are in a chronically elevated sympathetic state, meaning there's a lot of stress in your environment, uh, or in your life. And then what happens is eventually because the parasympathetic operates with hormones, I mean, it becomes, ex it becomes exhausted. There's not enough um, <clears throat> in the adrenals, there's not enough resources there to compensate for chronic uh, stress. So as they become exhausted, then the sympathetic over it over responds or it feels like it's over responding. And, and so then that way you're more sensitive to like electromagnetic fields, wind, temperature, sunlight, touch, feel, noise, uh, all kinds of things. And uh, so the focus that you need to be concerned about more than anything is restoring your adrenals. First of all, know that what the issue is and then restoring the adrenals. By grounding, what you're going to do there is you're going to calm the nervous system down. That's the number one thing we hear. It's, there's a calming effect. So that calms the sympathetic or dampens the sympathetic. And then the adrenals can begin to rebuild and restore. And you are protected when you are grounded against low frequency, like EMF, 60 hertz EMFs, and those particular uh, low band, low frequencies. Um, so grounding is very beneficial for anybody who is electrically sensitive, yes. Moving on from there, we do have our next question coming from An uh, Nancy, actually here on Zoom. Um, and so Nancy's letting us know that she is your acupuncturist today who is an integrative practitioner. 
is about mm -hmm. 67 years old and has been visiting her for over a decade. Uh, does seem to be up to date with current trends in integrative medicine and had brought in an earthing book to actually share with her acupuncturist. Uh, she said she had already read about it and tried the pillowcase, but did find that they didn't really notice you know, any kind of, uh, you know, I guess, distinct benefit that she had really noticed too heavily. Uh, but she is a pretty healthy person as well. And so just a question as to why some people may or may not experience a, a dramatic kind of benefit from using the products. Well, <clears throat> the number one thing you're going to experience with grounding is reduction of pain and calming of the nervous system. Um, <clears throat> if you, you, the, you have to know the first thing the grounding does is well, first of all, we used to live on the earth. We used to always be grounded. Um, <clears throat> and before 1960, we were always barefoot or we wore leather sole shoes. So we always had a negative charge, meaning the earth is negative about 20 millivolts. You take and you stand barefoot on the earth or on leather sole shoes that are somewhat conductive. And your body is going to be at 20 volts, 20 millivolts negative. And what that means is you cannot have charge when you're grounded. So <clears throat> anytime you have, and, and a lot of the processes, all the metabolic process, everything taking place in the body, you're creating a lot of um, reactive oxygen species. And those are uh, positively charged. Uh, they're electrically charged molecules because they're missing an electron or they have an electron imbalance. And <clears throat> so those are the radicals that we're all talking about or that everybody used to talk about. <clears throat> but anyway, when you're grounded, it prevents the radicals from doing damage in the body. There's no such thing as accumulated uh, radicals in the body because they only last a few nanoseconds. But what they do is they create damage, they create a fire. And that's what the, if you have any kind of pain or chronic pain in your body, that is from inflammation. You have to have the fire uh, first in order for the pain to manifest. And, and pain is really a manifestation to tell you that your body is in fire and you need to get out of there or do something to put the fire out or the stress or whatever it is. So I think everybody is uh, different, um, but if you, so I, I've never met a person, I hardly, even young people today, I was talking to somebody earlier today that, you know, 40% of our children now can be diagnosed with uh, prediabetes. That is an inflammation related health disorder and, and, on, and all of these other uh, inflammation type related, related disorders. So, <clears throat> but anyhow, our lifestyles living apart from the earth, living away from nature and not living in harmony with nature anymore. Our bodies are full of inflammation, almost everybody's. And so if somebody's healthy and happy, that's really good. That means they're eating good. They're eating, um, eating well, and they're um, probably doing some kind of grounding. Maybe it's incidental or in different ways. Uh, I, I can't really speak to one person, but, but um, basically everybody benefits from grounding. I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. We've spent 20 years and, and un, untold amounts of time and money uh, doing research. And so we know it's a phenomena that is in nature. When we're touching the earth, our body's negative. When we take and put shoes on, our bodies slowly become negative. And as soon as they become negative, then it's less likely to maintain the, um, you know, to ground out and to reduce the uh, remaining radicals that are created by normal metabolic processes and immune responses. I'm, I think that's very helpful for you know giving people information, especially on what to expect as well. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Mm -hmm. We do have our next question here coming from George here on Zoom. And George is asking if we have uh, any evidence that it can help a person with MND, which is motor neurone disease. It's coming from George over in Ireland. Well, if it's, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure that I'm familiar with that, but if it's a motor you know muscle disease, then it's. It, there's inflammation involved because something is destroying the muscle or the, or the normal functioning of the body. So I would uh, rec highly recommend experimenting with it. Uh, use the patches if it's a localized event. 
uh, ground. <clears throat> you can start outdoors in the backyard just by taking a chair outdoors, sitting on the earth, putting your bare feet on the earth in the sunshine and just sit there for an hour. Uh, and not necessarily in direct sunlight, but just fit and, and recognize the changes that occur in your body and your overall nervous system and the color. Everyone being different can be different solutions for each person as well. Yes. We do have a quick success story from our friend Doug over on YouTube, letting us know that as he sits uh, here watching the webinar, his arms and elbows are on a mat in front of his laptop and his feet are on a mat as well. And he's good to go, feels great. And he used to need to take Advil, but no longer needs to at this time. So I just wanted to give a shout out there. Uh, thank you for joining us. And our next question coming from Sherry. And Sherry is letting us know that since she had started sleeping on her universal mat, she's actually had some painful cramps in her calves, wondering if we might know what might be causing them. Um, don't know for sure, but I've heard things of that nature occasionally. Uh, I would up my mineral intake, whether it's like eating bananas or things that have potassium and, um, you know, things that, you know, just, I think they had, I think that may have to do with diet, uh, drink some mineral water rather than refine, um, reverse osmosis water, things like that. Uh, or take a mineral supplement. I don't, but I, I think it would be more related to that. Well, from growing up playing sports, the biggest times for that was definitely a shortage of potassium and dehydration were the biggest ones for me. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. And moving on from here, let's move over to our viewers on Facebook. We have a question here from Denny. Uh, Denny's saying, it's great to see you live, Clint. And he's read your book uh, some years ago and slept on grounded bed sheets ever since. And I was thinking recently if he should be replacing them, is they're about four or five years old now, or is there a way to test them? Um, <clears throat> there is a way to test them. Um, they have the testers at earthing.com, of course. And um, <clears throat> I would say that the new products that we have, most of those, the oldest they are is about four years old, the, the new carbon. So I would say if you're using the cotton silver, Definitely, you need to check them. Definitely, you need to find out if they're working. The, the best way to know if they're working, are, are you sleeping good? And um, if you have pain in your body, they're probably not working good. Uh, but <clears throat> but if, they're, if they're the old cotton silver sheets, they're probably needing to be replaced by now. But again, a tester would be the best way to find out. Thanks. And we're on from there. We do have a question here from one of our Zoom viewers uh, asking if earthing will help to prevent shingles in a person 65 years or older, or would you also need two-part vaccine for that as well? Um, <clears throat> I, the, the only thing I really know about shingles is the people who have shingles, when we ground them, they get extremely great benefit rather instantly because they, the ones I have seen are bands around the chest. And so we have grounded them and made devices to ground people. Um, as far as what promotes shingles, um, I think it's related to um, chicken pox or other things that we had when we were young. And um, it's stored in the, what brings it on is stress, um, certain types of stress and chronic stress. Uh, but I don't, you know, anything you can do to um, reduce stress in the body and to, and to maintain and restore or restore or maintain uh, a strong immune system is going to help with anything because not everybody gets shingles. Uh, I don't think it's a, um, I mean, if something brings it on. It's a flaring disease, kind of like MS or various other health disorders. Um, so I can't say that it will prevent it, um, but I think that if you can, if you, if, if I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say the grounding, I can't tell you not to get the shots is what I'm telling you. I don't, yeah, I don't think I would tell you not to get them because I don't know, but I know the grounding will help under any circumstances, pre and after and during. And next up, we do have a question coming in from YouTube. This is coming from JB. 
Uh, JV's letting us know that he ordered an earthing mat with us. And he's actually just asking if he can use it while sitting at the computer working. I don't know which mat it is, but you can use it anywhere you want. <laughs> They're all Absolutely. portable. I don't know, especially with the universal mat, that's definitely a favorite for yeah. you know, people working at a desk such as myself. So that always yeah. helps me out there. Yeah. Moving on from there, we do have a question from our friend Marjean, uh, letting us know that she has AFib and is using the sheets currently and wondering if a patch would help during sleeping or non-sleeping hours, uh, should it be placed say, you know, near the heart? Um, <clears throat> again, we have a lot of people who have benefit from grounding with AFib. I mean, there, there's lots of um, there's stories in the book. There's information at the earthinginstitute.net. There are studies there. And uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to suggest where to necessarily put the patch regarding the heart because I'm not into that. I mean, I, I just don't know. Um, but I would say, grounding first and then uh, just a patch try it on the hand try it on the you know the left hand and sleep with the patch on it and just monitor it and <clears throat> with afib i mean if you experience that during the day you know just experiment and try to find out but there's you know there's other things related to the cause and you need to definitely investigate that first and then Anything, the grounding is going to help you no matter what. Um, um, and, and more grounding is better. And uh, if it's an acute situation, then put it on the left hand and sleep with the patch for a while. And, and please let us know how, what you experience. I think you'll be nice. surprised. And our next question is coming from Anastasia here on uh, Zoom. Um, and actually, she's letting us know that she recently introduced her friend to grounding because she's been having some fertility issues for a while. I uh, did mention that she got hit by lightning when she was a child, and everybody always jokes that she breaks electronics just by being near them. And uh, I guess she was just wondering what the, want to know what the long-term uh, possible effects I think from grounding could be, um, especially with regards to, I think, that first statement there, having those issues. Well, <clears throat> um, we have quite a history with... Um grounding and fertility, but I have to tell a little story first to help it make a little more sense. When I was very young, one of my uncles <clears throat> raised a mink and they had what they called a mink house. And this is back when fur counts, um, mink coats and all that were, you know, in vogue. And, um, <clears throat> and they made their living raising mink. And this is up in Montana. And um, so at certain times of the year, the mink would breed. And I remember one time one of my friends came over and we were probably out horsing around making some noise in the, in the barnyard. And all of a sudden my uncle comes out there just wailing his arms and get away from the mink house. You know, quit making all the noise and everything. You'll scare the mink. And I didn't really know what that was all about. And he, until later he told us, he said, well, if mink are, uh, you know, if they're stressed at all, then, then they, you know, they can't get, um, they can't get pregnant. I mean, they don't mate. And if they do, they, I mean, they don't uh, conceive. So anyhow, after that, then I started paying attention, but all animals, if you study anything in the animal world, uh, no animal will, uh, can be, um, uh, no animal will conceive if there's any stress in the body or in the environment. And so, <clears throat> Considering that, and that's, so that's cortisol related. So your cord, you have elevated cortisol. So you cannot conceive if you have elevated cortisol. So anyhow, over the years, one of the, in, in, uh, up in Ventura, one of the first um, people that we grounded was a chiropractor and his wife. And they had been trying to get pregnant for several years and she couldn't conceive. Well, within 30 days, she had gotten pregnant of uh, grounding. And then we kept hearing these stories over a period of time. Then I was afraid to talk about them because who wants to, you know, get grounded if there's any chance? Because a lot of women, are, you know, they, they don't take, um, you know, the, the birth control pills you know, after a certain age and so on. But we've had older people 
who have reported getting pregnant after sleeping grounded who didn't want to get pregnant. So it is say it's so it has to do with the calming of the nervous system and uh, reducing cortisol and um, just getting the stress out of the body. So I think that anybody that knows these things, um, yes, it's something that um, will be very beneficial for her. And maybe it'll ground some of the lightning out too. <laughs> All right. And we do have our next question here um, asking if, well, this is actually a pretty common one that we do get, if there's a good way to keep cats from chewing through the earthing cords. It does have all sorts of the cords, but their cats just seem to be drawn right to them. Yeah, the, the reason, I mean, those cords, every, you know, they radiate a, they have a pulse. I mean, it's just the earth pulse, but it's not just the electrons in the cord, but the cats know what's in that cord because they can sense the electric field of the earth within the cord. And um, <clears throat> I have no idea how to um, prevent cats from eating cords other than going and buying those uh, shielded cords, those wraparound shielding that you can get at Home Depot, I think, and uh, never thought about that, but that's one way to do it. They're either metal or they're plastic for wrapping wires in. That might be one way. But yeah, cats are problematic. Uh, well, I've heard of some products that you can't find at pet stores and the like that you know do not taste good to pets, and so you can put it on there to kind of deter them from chewing out as well. Yeah, best thing is put them on a mat and leave them. They all like exactly. the mats. <laughs> Give them a mat. Now we did have a question here, actually asking where the sheets are sold, as they can't find them on the website. I did just want to mention. Uh, the sheets with the silver have actually been discontinued at this time. So we do currently have uh, an updated line of products at the moment. Yep, I can explain why. Absolutely, uh, I think that would help a lot. Yeah, the main reason we started uh, back in, I think in 206, 207, when we first started doing some of our studies where we needed bigger ground planes, uh, we started making uh, cotton, sheets and putting the silver strands in them and then crossing them so that you had a grid uh, so that we could use them to uh, do studies on people who slept grounded for some period of days or weeks. And then immediately after we started making those things, everybody, you know, the subjects, the researchers and relatives and everybody wanted the grounding products. So we ended up making a few of them, and then all of a sudden the business started around that. But the problem we had with the silver, and we, we knew we had the problem early on, but we didn't know what to do about it because we had no, no other solution. But for many people, the silver sometimes would not even last six, eight weeks, especially men who had sweated a lot and had a lot of sulfur in their body. Uh, women, on the other hand, they didn't have quite the problem. But uh, so the body perspiration alone will oxidize the silver and then the silver loses its conductivity. <clears throat> then we had a lot of people who um, back then, as soon as they got the sheet, they would wash it in a special um, something, you know, to purify it or whatever and ruin it immediately. Or they would use some of the, what they called healthier uh, detergents and so on. And most of them had grapeseed or certain oxidative oils in them and that would destroy the sheets. So we just had a nightmare on our hands for years and years. And then finally it got to the point we were getting like a 20 to 30% return rate uh, from, because the sheets were expensive. They were expensive to make, they were expensive for people to buy. So we ended up just saying, we can't do this any longer. And then we set about developing the uh, carbon-based sheets or the mats that go under the sheet because they're a hundred percent where the sheets were only 5% conductive. The carbon mats are a hundred percent conductive and a carbon mat will last. We don't know for sure, but we know at least seven, eight years and probably 20 years. And um, so <clears throat> something that might last a year versus something that lasts 20. And so we, so our goal was to find a way to give uh, people a functional product. It wasn't necessarily the, something that matched the curtains or, or, the, or, or the bedspread. What we were trying to do was provide a product 
that would solve a problem. And the problem was inflammation. So that's why we switched from the cotton to the uh, carbon-based sleep mats. So it's a big deal. And it cost a lot of money. It cost a lot of money. Yeah. It took a lot of time, but it's really a bulletproof product. Absolutely well worth it, definitely. We do have our next question here, uh, coming from Sally in Minnesota, uh, relative to one previous questions about using the sheets or the pillowcase. Um, do we have any suggestions with regards to the thread count or thickness of any kind of cotton fabric that they might be using? Um, <clears throat> I think any cotton sheet is going to work because it holds moisture. Uh, thread count, um, you know, in the old days, thread count used to be 150 or 240 or something like that. Now they're 2000. Um, you know, the weight, uh, the thicker it is, the more it weighs, the more it's gonna, the more uh, perspiration it's going to take, more hydration that it's going to take. So I would say the thinner, the better. Um, thread count is really uh, all over the place. I don't really know. A 300 count sheet is a common sheet. The things that we have found that work well for, I mean, the poly cotton sheets, you know, the, you know, the 30, 40% poly and, and the cotton, those are just as effective also. So it's really all over the place. Uh, I, I sleep on a pretty thin cotton sheet and half the time I sleep directly on the mat, so. I do think, you know, they touch on a good point that there is a decent amount of variance between the manufacturers of these sheets and yeah. how they measure the thread count, things like that as well. Yeah, so. yeah it's all over the place. Absolutely. We do have uh, another question here we do actually see quite often as well from Leslie. And Leslie's asking if grounding can significantly ameliorate the effects of Lyme disease, as they know someone who's been struggling for a year without positive results from herbs and pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, we have a lot of inflammation and we've worked with a lot of people with Lyme's. And again, go to the Earthing Institute and do keyword search on Lyme. And I think you'll find quite a few reports, but there's an article in there by Alex, um, I uh, don't remember her last name right now, but anyhow, uh, find that article. And uh, she led one of the Limes groups for years and eventually got past Limes and is now back to work doing other things. Um, <clears throat> but the, the main thing with Limes is um, people who struggle with it, once they start getting grounded, the first thing that happens is they, they get a flu-like response. And that's from usually from the, the, as soon as you ground, then it normalizes your blood viscosity or it thins the blood. The blood is easier, more easily gets into the capillaries and oxygenates the tissue. And there's a die off of spirochetes and very, I mean, whatever else is going on with limes. And, and then, uh, so you feel like you have the flu, just like you were to catch a flow, a, a cold or a flu and the immune system goes to work and you have a huge die off and then it floods the body and you have run, sometimes you run fever and, you, and all of those things. But anyhow, so the thing that we've learned with the people with Lyme's, it, all, it benefits all of them. The key to it is when you start grounding, you're going to feel different and you're going to have different responses, but it's all related to your blood viscosity, your circulation and the immune response. And so if it's too strong for you, then you just need to mod modulate and moderate it and you know, go slow. Some people a half hour at a time, some people a few hours at a time, some people only during the day, some people just say, I'm gonna do it and they go right on through it and uh, um, have the flu for three or four days and get it over with. So, but anyhow, yes, we have a lot of reports and a lot of people, so it's very beneficial for people with Lyme's, yes. So for anyone curious, we, I am going to be posting a link here in the chat to the Earthing Institute website where you can find all the research studies as well as testimonials from people with different conditions as well and how they benefit it. Yeah. And on from there, we do have uh, another question coming in here from Zoom uh, saying hi from Australia. Uh, thank you for the great interviews and letting us know the patches for BPH were the best, the best area to place the patch. 
patches. And actually, for BPH, where is the best area to place the patches? The bottom of the feet, on the belly, the hands, or underneath the scrotum at that point, just to make sure that it's the closest to the location at hand. Uh, letting us know they also do sleep on an earthing sheet currently, have their feet on an earthing mat, and they do have an earthing pillow and an earthing sheet over them as well at the moment. Um, I, I would say that that person has to use their in, intuition um, because it's a circulation issue. The bottom of the feet is the most, that's what I recommend most or the hand on the side of the body, that's where the issue is. Um, but I would start with the feet because <clears throat> the, the bottom of the hands and the bottom of the feet are the most conductive areas of the body. It's like there's hardly any resistance on the palm of the hand, but there's up to five megs of resistance on the skin on the arm. And um, so by putting it on K1, the middle of the foot, uh, that's where I have found that within five, 10 minutes that we get the most results for most people. Absolutely. And to go on from there, we do have a question from YouTube. This is coming from Tracy. Uh, Trace is asking if the earthing cards work. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. That is a card that's some network marketing. It's a metal card, like a credit card that some network marketing group started manufacturing when earthing became popular and said, well, all we have to do is just put it in this card because it's got whatever, whatever. Um, there's no science. There's no... Um, nothing to back that up. It's just a network marketing game as far as I know. So, but if it's effective, somebody go ahead and use it. Uh, there's always a placebo effect. And from there, uh, we do have another question from Facebook. This one's coming from Bobby asking if you recommend purchasing grounding shoes and if so, any hints on where to purchase them? This or features to look for as well. Now, this is another question we get quite often. You know, um, there are, you can Google earthing shoes, grounded shoes, anti static shoes, uh, grounded shoes, you know, and there's dozens of companies and people out there. Um, I know everybody, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, whatever it was. The number one question that I was asked daily, have you ever thought about shoes? And I always said, no, of course I had thought about it, but because everybody kept asking me, they must've thought I was crazy. So um, anyhow, um, I just kind of left the shoes alone. The most important thing to us was, and I'll get to answer the question. The most important thing to, for us was to ground people during sleep because that's the only time that people stay in one place long enough to really benefit. And oftentimes the grounded shoes, you know, people are, if they're not walking on sidewalk or they don't get outdoors, there's really very little benefit to having the shoes. So, but anyhow, if you're a hiker, if you're all those kind of things, um, I've, you know, Reebok has a really nice soft toed uh, anti-static shoe that is really, it's got, it's more for the hiking type. Uh, there's the, what they call earth runners. That's a little piece of, of uh, uh, of a shoe sole with a rivet through it. And they since have started putting stainless steel thread in it. Uh, but there's all these things, you, all you can do is try them. Um, and I can't really recommend them because I don't have any of them except for the Reeboks. And um, <clears throat> the, uh, the thing that we are doing to help get this started is we're hoping that by by spring, you know, by uh, spring, meaning January, February, March uh, of this year, that we'll start getting delivery of what, you know, it's a grounded flip flop. It's just a standard. It's kind of like the Model T Ford. You could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. And, it, and, it, and it'll work. It got you from here to there. But anyhow, so this is a black uh, Javiana type flip flop. It's the most popular shoe in the world. Um, and it's the least expensive. And so we have uh, engineered a way to make the 
portion of the top and a, and a large portion of the bottom of that sole conductive and they will last a season and hopefully they'll be in the $20 range so that everybody can experience uh, grounding a grounded shoe that works because we, I mean, that main thing for me, and that's why it's taken me two years to do this year would have been done earlier if it weren't for COVID, but, but the, um, <clears throat> but the main thing has got to be functional. And some of these shoes are not functional and, but I can't re uh, nobody puts the research into it. Nobody does the work that we do. They just, they love the buzzwords. They love to go to China and buy anything they can and put it on the market and sell it. So, but anyhow, we're trying to come out with a shoe that is in a $20 range that everybody can experience grounding. And then once we get a few million of them out there, then we want to be able to go to the shoe industry and say, you guys need to fix your shoes. It only costs 20 cents to fix the damn shoes because all of our kids are suffering from inflammation related health disorders. And we know now that inflammation, the underlying cause of inflammation is ungrounded shoes. And so that's our mission, but that's a long-term, you know, this is a three to five year deal. But so anyhow, yeah, I would love to say, go buy this shoe. I can't tell you that, uh, but I can tell you to go to Google, type in ESD, electrostatic discharge shoes, anti-static shoes, grounded shoes. Uh, I don't, Earthing doesn't have any shoes, but there may be a lot of people out there using our name. Um, but anyhow, I would go there and then depend on the, the, the ratings or the, uh, you know, the comments that the existing customer base is feeding and make your decision there. I wish I could do it, but I can't. Moving on from there, we do have our next question is coming in from Daryl here on Zoom. And Daryl is actually asking if using the grounding patch on his kidney would help prevent a or reduce the occurrence of kidney stones? I'm not sure if we do have any research on that. Uh, I, we do have, don't have research, but we have reports about people uh, that have pain in the kidneys and putting the pain, you know, having cysts on the kidneys, various things, putting the patches on the kidney and they do recover. And, um, but again, <clears throat> the recovery, it has to do with reducing the inflammation in the body overall and then the blood normalizing and you're getting better improved circulation and better functioning of the immune system and so on. But yes, uh, I would certainly experience, experiment with it. Absolutely. And then actually, you know, touching on normalizing things with the blood actually get, leads into our next question here from Katie. And Katie's actually asking if your health is compromised and you want to maintain earthing but run a low blood pressure, is grounding still okay? maintain a low blood pressure so they, they're saying they run at a low blood pressure but they want to earth consistently yeah they, i mean <clears throat> what, what first of all what earthing does you have to realize that in in nature throughout all time humans lived on the earth we were we didn't have rubber sole shoes we didn't have foam mattresses we didn't have all this ingenious i mean all this fancy flooring and carpets we had dirt floors we had bare feet, sometimes animal skins and whatever. But we've heard throughout all time, we were naturally grounded. We all, our body was always maintained at a negative um, voltage. And, <clears throat> and so therefore throughout evolution and all time, we didn't have inflammation. That's how we got here. Um, <clears throat> now to help make that make more sense is the animals who live in the wild, uh, inflammation related health disorders rarely manifest if ever in the in the animal world uh, however animals and humans who live indoors we all have our bodies are full of inflammation and i lost my thought there where was i going <laughs> so with that i know we were starting off just on a question with regards to blood pressure uh, okay so low blood pressure yeah so low blood pressure uh, you know so what i'm telling you is that if you get grounded and stay grounded, then your body will return to normal, whatever normal is. Uh, if you're talking about lower than normal blood pressure, uh, I can't speak to that uh, or higher, but we do know that it, uh, grounding re normalizes blood viscosity, the thickness of the blood. And <clears throat> the thickness of the blood and the you know all the other systems in this 
dance that they all have, uh, they normalize everything in the body. Everything is, I mean, it's, the body is one thing. It's, and it's all related. It's all, it all functions together. You know, something that happens here happens throughout the body instantly. I mean, it's all, uh, I'm not saying that very well, but <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I don't think it would have any adverse effect, but, uh, but you always have to, no matter what, experiment, 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 and keep track of what your changes are. But I think the only changes you could ever have with earthing would be improvement in health and most, more, most specifically uh, the health and, and uh, of the immune system. Yeah, definitely addressing the individual parts of this big machine that we are, yeah. how they work together in harmony, absolutely. Yeah. We do have another question coming in here. Um, just asking if you have any tips in particular uh, for specific things to look for when buying a house, uh, kind of health environment wise. Uh, so when getting a home inspection prior to buying, he just wants to make sure he's asking the right questions. Well, <clears throat> the number one thing that I would do if I were buying a house um, I, I would want something well, you know, I have to be careful because different parts of the country, different parts of the world, these options aren't available, but a concrete floor. And then I would polish it and stain it. And I would put a water-based sealer on. So no carpet and I'm grounded 100% of the time, as long as I'm barefoot in that house. If I need carpet in the bedroom, whatever, then I would just have a throw rug. Those are the type of things I would have. Um, <clears throat> if the home is new, newer, um, then electric fields aren't near the problem. But a lot of the older homes, if they were built before 1970, uh, back in the 60s, uh, a lot of some of those homes do not have grounded outlets. And they can't just go ground them because they have to tear the wall board off and redo all of the wiring. But um, <clears throat> I would be cautious about buying a home that didn't have a grounding system, not just because of the grounding we do, but um, it's just the, it's important to, to, that your home is upgraded to uh, past current electrical standards. Um, yeah, it gets technical. I can just tell people what I would do if I could start over. <laughs> I would build a house. I would never buy a house. I would build a, have a house built. I can't do that today. I don't want to, but, but I would have a concrete floor. I would have um, all the walls, all the wiring I would put in uh, metal clad. And what that means is if you, all of the offices in the world, all of the schools, all of the commercial businesses, they all have metal clad wiring in the walls. So there's no electric fields. There's no electric field in your school. There's no electric field in your doctor's office or the hospital or anywhere, only in homes because builders didn't want to pay the, you know, go to the trouble to add the cost and, and charge it. But, uh, but in Santa Monica and Chicago, you have metal clad um, wiring also, that's because of fires and uh, in the old days. So, but anyhow, I would have uh, the home rewired or wired with metal clad so that there are no electric fields. It's just quieter, it's cleaner and quieter. I would have no carpets in the home because you would get rid of all the static electricity. Um, and yeah, I would just, that's what I would do. Those are the two main things, being grounded and, and reducing the electrical noise in the home. They're just, I mean, it's just, what can I say? I, I, I shouldn't even talk about it because it's a monumental problem and nobody can, most people cannot do anything about it. But if you're looking and starting from scratch, uh, that's where I would start. Awesome. Those are some fantastic tips, definitely. Going on from there, uh, we do have a question coming in from YouTube. This is coming from Kim. And Kim is asking if you can consciously with intent ground yourself anywhere you are, even if there's no grass to step on. Um, <clears throat> well, yes, you can. you can, but that's mental grounding. That's quieting the monkey in the in the mind. That's quieting the, mind. the quieting the nervous system. That's trying to tune in with you know 
whether it's nature or the earth or whatever to calm down absolutely that is uh, also essential if that's what i keep there's two kinds of grounding one is physical and one is mental we need to do both <laughs> because an ungrounded mind uh, you know is causing all too often it's feeding the inflammation the um, um you know the elevated sympathetic responses so but <clears throat> you'll you will find that i think mental grounding like a body worker or a spiritual somebody that works with those kind of things um if you can calm the mind down you're going to reduce inflammation you're going to reduce what's feeding the inflammation you're going to quiet the cortisol you're going to quiet you know a lot of stuff in the body meditation if you can meditate, if you can really meditate, uh, then that's really good for quieting the mind and, and putting everything at bay. That's going to, it's definitely good. Grounded meditation, grounded to the earth meditation is definitely better. We've done a study on that. We know that it's more effective to ground yourself to do meditation when you're grounded. Um, <clears throat> it, it's more effective in quieting the mind. Uh, and it's because you're reducing the inflammation reducing the cortisol and quieting the nervous system. And then the whole body quiets down where if you're not grounded and doing it, you still have a lot of that inflammation and you can't get rid of it just by thinking it away. You have to do something to make it go away. You can prevent it from reoccurring by meditating and so on. Yes, but for sure. Yes. Yes. And yes. I'm not sure what the yes was there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no worries. Yeah, so we do have our next question is again coming from YouTube. This is coming from Bosky, uh, asking uh, if her mom, who does have a titanium knee, actually would be all right to ground on the mattress cover that they had just purchased. Absolutely. And with that, it can be you know, titanium replacements, things like pacemakers and defibrillators as well are perfectly yeah. safe for that as well. Yes. So we do have another question from Rosie. Uh, Rosie's asking if there have been any formal studies in grounding on people who have psoriasis. There's no formal studies, but there's lots of uh, results, meaning people talk about <clears throat> psoriasis is, is an inflammation related health disorder. So inflammation is the base. So something you're eating, something you're doing, or, you know, all these things, all the environmental Whatever it is, it's inflammation. You can go to Google and type in psoriasis and inflammation, and you can gain a little bit of insight there. So <clears throat> definitely you want to reduce the inflammation and probably want to clean up the diet. So grounding will help with the inflammation, and it might even help with the food, because when you get grounded, you kind of calm down a little bit, and you can be a little more disciplined. So. And if you do have our next question here is going to come from Arpit in India, uh, or he lets us know in India, we were always told to walk barefoot, but no one provided a sound reason why. So yep. I did want to share his thanks to you for sharing the wisdom with everybody here. Yep. Yep. Moving on to his question, he asks, what is the minimum time to do earthing? Goes to the park to walk on bare soil every morning and walk for half an hour. And then also does earthing happen on cement floors? and if they're walking barefoot on the ground floor. Yeah, um, uh, again, <clears throat> the amount of time to be grounded, more, you know, more is always better. Any amount is good, but more is better. Uh, in nature, we'd be 24 um, seven. <clears throat> so walking barefoot is excellent because it's good for the whole system. Um, um, the concrete in the home, or uh, floors, it, it's, it's made of earthen materials. It holds moisture, so it is conductive. In general, all climates, except when it gets around 110, 120 degrees, then it may be a, you know, less humidity, but it's still grounded. Um, <clears throat> so um, where do I go from there on that question? Yeah, I think we you know, did cover the concrete flooring quite a bit. And the other one was just that question about minimum earthing time. So I think we hit both parts of that pretty well. Yeah. If, if you have any pain in your body, you have to get grounded and stay grounded until the pain stops. 
then you can go as long as you can and the pain comes back, you have to get regrounded because that is what, what grounding is all about. Your body's on fire. It's a message that, hey, get me grounded, put the fire out. Our next question does come from Fred. Uh, Fred's letting us know that he is actually currently prescribed a blood thinner for AFib and is asking if grounding will make his blood even thinner. Um, <clears throat> if you, what earthing does is normalize blood viscosity. That means if you stay grounded, you get grounded, you stay grounded, it's gonna normalize your blood viscosity. <clears throat> you have to be careful anytime you have a health disorder because if you're only gonna ground for an hour a day, then keep taking your meds because you've gotta be grounded more than not grounded in order for the grounding effect to overtake some of these situations we're talking about. But, <clears throat> but again, uh, if you're taking a blood thinner, then you do have to, the doctors are gonna test your INR occasionally, and they're gonna tell you if it's too thin uh, and so on. But grounding will affect blood viscosity. It will normalize blood viscosity. If you're taking a blood thinner, then it will make the blood a little thinner. Uh, in some cases, it may not be a problem, but if you're taking Coumadin, it could be a problem. And you, it's really easy to tell because oftentimes you'll pass out. If, you're, if, if, if your blood gets too thin or you'll bruise easily, you can just touch, you know, just snap the skin. And if you get a bruise, that means your blood is too thin. Um, but, but the main thing is you do, if you're on blood thinners, then ground yourself during the day and start to become familiar with it. Does it make you feel better? Does it get rid of pain? Does it help with the AFib? Then, if you decide to start grounding more, then start talking to your doctor. And he may not understand it, but you, there are a couple of studies at the Earthing Institute you can re, uh, refer to, um, <clears throat> but, um, but just do it intelligently. Uh, if it's, you know, have your doctor at least test your INR to make sure that your blood's not too thin. Absolutely. Our next question here is coming to us from Facebook. Uh, this actually is another common question. We do get another great one uh, from Sarah asking uh, us about dirty electricity, saying that um, told that grounding mats might be actually using dirty electricity, so not to use them near smart meters, cell towers, etc. And asking how to do that because they're just everywhere at this point. Well, you know that's the problem. <clears throat> you know the the people who um, sell the dirty electricity. They've been, you know, hounding me for 20 years. And, and I remember, and I kind of have to tell the whole story, otherwise it won't make sense. But <clears throat> uh, about 20 years ago, uh, when I first did my first study and got it published, there was a group called Biobiologists and uh, Larry Gust and a few of that group down in Southern California. They invited me down to one of their meetings in San Diego because they wanted to understand what this grounding was all about. Because what I was saying was very simple. Um, <clears throat> in the world I come from, uh, which is communications, you have to ground everything in order to prevent EMI, electromagnetic interference. That means if there's electric fields in the area, you have to ground everything, shield everything so that these um, fields don't interfere with um, sound or data or video or whatever. So to me, it's just common sense, horse sense for 30 years, we've grounded everything. We pioneered the grounding industry uh, along with the, uh, the, when they started developing computers and chips, that's when grounding became much more uh, aware and much more uh, proactive in preventing uh, static charges. So, so anyhow, I went to the meeting and uh, I said, well, you know, then I listened to them and they were doing about this, how you go to the house and you charge the people a thousand dollars or $1,200 or whatever you can get. This is back then. And you go in and you measure all the electric fields in their home. And then you come back with a report and you tell them, these are the things you need to fix and whatever. One of my friends up in Idaho paid $25,000 of course, she had the money. She's famous. Everybody knows her. But <clears throat> she paid over $25,000 for a Bob biologist because they came and said that she had to move a telephone pole that was outside of her house in order to get the 
power company to do it that day and, and so on and so on. And then I went back afterwards for a party up there one time and, and I said, well, let's go measure them and see what the response was. Well, they, they didn't, didn't affect anything. It was just so, but anyhow, dirty electricity, dirty electricity, uh, EMF. First of all, EMFs were bad. First of all, it was magnetic fields. And back in 20 years ago, there was a lady in Denver who went out running around saying I mean, that it was a cause of leukemia. And the, yeah, and the National Institute of Health Sciences spent you know, hundreds of millions of dollars doing research or researchers you know, researching the effects of, of electric or of magnetic fields. And I told them back then, I said, you guys are out of your mind because magnetic fields are not the, the, uh, the active uh, mechanism here. It's electric fields because electric fields can electrify something. A magnetic field, you know, like magnetic fields goes through brick, it goes through body. The earth's magnetic field goes through everything. You can't stop it. You, the only way you can stop it is to have new metal or new metal, which is very expensive and no one can afford that. Otherwise, turn your power off and move away from the city because it's 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 in it's everywhere. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, but so then people, you know, and these people made their living. But basically, I said all you have to do is ground the body, and the body is automatically protected from uh, electric fields. And nothing on this earth is going to protect you from those magnetic fields. And but anyhow, they made their money measuring them and kind of, I thought, scaring people and then charging them a lot of money and then doing things that really didn't benefit as far as I could tell. And I've invited many of them. In fact, one of them that lived in Palm Springs where I was living, I said, please come out. Let's hire independent people. Let's get this on the table so people can really understand that. Uh, let's get uh, independent electrical engineers. Let's get triple E's. Let's get people that really understand this. And they said, no, they would, they would not tell the truth. And so, I mean, so it was all kind of nutty. And I'm sorry if I'm going on, but anyhow, this is the story. And so anyhow, uh, so the, I presented to him, I said, here, measure your electric field. Let's ground a human being and see if there's, and see what happens to the electric field around the body. Well, of course it goes to zero. Well, that just was not something they could accept. And so they forever, then they went to, uh, well, you can't ground the body because, well, you know, the, 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 uh, the earth is dirty. There's dirty electricity. There's everything in the world. And I said, but you don't understand. <laughs> um, the earth, you know, I mean, the body has thousands, I mean, of its own electric fields. I mean, uh, each organ, each group of cells has electric fields. Uh, there's trillions of electric fields coming from space that, you know, we, but anyhow, our skin is acts as a Faraday cage. It wants to keep, and, and the Nylon sheath on the nerves. It wants to keep the electric field of the, of the pulses within the confines of the nerve. The skin wants to keep the confines of the electrical melee of the body internally, and it wants to keep out anything that could interfere with the body uh, because it's kind of a natural Faraday cage, and especially when it's grounded. Um, so, anyhow, I could go on and on. I spent lots of years and lots of wasted years and time. Uh, playing with these people, but <clears throat> dirty electric, there's no, when you connect a wire to the earth, then the wire is grounded and dirty electricity is what they call dirty electricity is the motor on your refrigerator kicking on and off or a light switch kicking on and off, having motors in your home. And <clears throat> what they don't tell you is that if you're standing in the middle of your living room, you can measure that dirty electricity on your body while you're in the middle of the living room. But if I ground you to the earth with the wire, it will eliminate that effect because that's environmental. Um, but anyhow, the thing of it is, this is a big, scary, you know, uh, big, scary, big, bad wolf uh, thing. And electric fields can harm you if you are in very close proximity, but environmental electric fields in the home, I have found that grounding with the mats and the devices that we that we developed, we developed them on purpose. We know what we're doing. We're not idiots, and we do have uh, qualified, educated electrical people work with us forever, and our you know PhDs and and so on. We know what we're doing, and um, 
I don't want to take these people on. But anyhow, dirty electricity is not coming up the wire. Dirty electricity is not uh, emanating from the bed pad. What's coming from the bed pad is the uh, electrical potential of the earth. The earth is negatively charged. When you connect the wire to it, then the, the wire becomes negative. And then when you connect a ground pad to the wire, then it, it equalizes with the earth and becomes negative like the earth itself. And then when you lay your body on it, then you become um, negative. So then you are electrically one in the same as the earth. The earth is infinitely large and you are infinitely small and no little bitty dirty electricity is going to influence the electrical capacity of the earth to hold you at earth potential. That's, that's just not possible. And um, <clears throat> so anyhow, I know I'm going on way too long for most of the people who are listening, but the main thing is with earthing is earthing is about the immune system. It's not about dirty electricity or any of those kind of things. It's about holding the body at earth potential so the body can maintain a negative, the negative charge of the earth which is about 20 millivolts negative. You can go and look at the blood viscosity study on the Earthing Institute, and you'll see that when we grounded the people, the red blood cells, before they were all stuck together, and as soon as we grounded them, and, and, the, and we measured the electrical potential on them, and then when we grounded the people, then the blood cells themselves uh, increased, de well, decreased, to the, they went negative to, and, and equalized with the earth. So like the earth itself, the red blood cells are grounded with the same electrical potential. That means that they have excess electrons. Now, then they started repelling each other because negative repels negative, And that's what thins and normalizes blood viscosity. And uh, so that's what earthing is about. It's about blood viscosity. It's about oxygenation of the blood and oxygenation of the tissue, reduction of inflammation and preventing charge and inflammation in the body that could otherwise promote chronic inflammation, which starts out with anxiety, irritability, depression, chronic pain, uh, then fibromyalgia, then lupus, MS, cancer, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's about 85 named ones that are popular and a few hundred that are not popular, but they're all one disease. It's called inflammation dysfunction of the immune system. So when you get grounded, we put out the fire and restore the immune system so the immune system can restore health. It has nothing to do with dirty electricity or electric fields. And there's no, per I've never, and I keep saying this, you know, for 23 years I've been doing research and I've run across the hundreds of these um, EMF people. <clears throat> I have not found any dead bodies from dirty electricity. I have not found any dead bodies from um, exposure to electric fields, but you can go to any hospital, go to any morgue today, and you're going to find somebody who died from an inflammation related health disorder. So this is about nature. It's about restoring our natural health. It's about reconnecting with, um, with our host. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to run on so long. <laughs> I, I think that was extremely well put. Um, and I think, you know, spending a decent amount of time on it based on how much misinformation there is about the oh, amounts in general there is. Yeah, it's, Another, it's, outra yeah, it's outrageous. They use, they, they, a lot of times these people, they, they attack earthing in order to fish for customers. And it's just the way the internet works today. So and there's nothing you can do except do what you do, do the right thing and do it and do as much of it as you can every day. So, you know, for doing due diligence on informing yourself, there is some great articles on the Earthing Institute website. And we do have a fantastic uh, presentation that was given by Gaetan Chevalier, actually in July last year uh, on EMFs. So definitely feel free to check that out for a lot more in-depth information as well. Yep. All right. We do have another question coming here from YouTube. This is coming from uh, JB. Uh, JB is actually letting us know he was told not to use the outdoor grounding spike within 15 feet of an electrical box or panel to the house and wondering if that information is correct. It's uh, all I can do is relate to my prior comments. Um, what they're talking about is if you have an electrical ground here, see anytime, let, let me put it this way. Electrical phenomena is, is, is something that's very difficult for people to get their minds around. 
But if I flip a switch over here, a light switch, it will put out a pulse, an electric pulse, and <clears throat> an electric field pulse. And it will actually travel to infinity. It will go to the other side of the universe. It will go past Pluto. You can measure it on Pluto if somebody flips a switch in your house. Uh, so anytime there's anything electrical, it's going to create a, a you know electric field, an electrical pulse and a wave. So you're sitting in a sea of electrical noise. I call it noise because in the communications industry, it's noise to us. Uh, electrical people will call it different things. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, so if you have a ground rod sitting here coming from your house, then uh, if there's any, I mean, if there's a short in your house and power went out of your house or lightning hit your house and it went down through the ground and whatever, in, a, in, in some fraction of some a certain amount of nanoseconds, it would come through the ground rod and dissipate through the earth. And it would do it radially. I, mean, I can't have a hard time saying that word, but in a circle, uh, like if when you have a pond of water uh, and you throw, if it's still and you throw a rock in it, there'll be ripples and they'll go and then they'll hit the bank or whatever and they'll ripple back and, and, and but until, travels far enough it's it's about doubling the distance every time you know the the electric field loses 50 percent of its power every time it doubles in distance so at one inch it'll lose you know let's say it, where it starts is zero one inch it'll lose 50 percent two inches it'll lose 75 percent four inches it'll lose you know whatever gets down to 12 and a half percent but it loses the power pretty rapidly, but it goes to infinity. Okay, so <clears throat> if you have a ground rod there, then any noise, anything coming down that ground rod is going to ripple out of that ground rod and dissipate into the earth and in a, in a circular fashion. It's not gonna go in a straight line. And <clears throat> so if you put another ground rod over here, then uh, what this person is assuming that it's going to tickle that ground rod and going to come up that ground rod and that's going to harm you. That's absolute nonsense. Uh, because <clears throat> first of all, in order for a ground, for something to come up a ground wire and go to a, if you have a pad in the bed connected to a ground wire connected to a ground, you have to have something connected on the other side of that bed pad going to the other side, out the window and to the earth on the other side. You have to create a circuit. You have to create a loop electricity can't travel unless there is a circuit um, but they don't know this so uh, it's hard to even go there but <clears throat> so anyhow again we're not talking about electric fields we're talking about <clears throat> restoring the immune system uh, reducing the inflammation in the body providing free electrons from the earth to the body so that it can put out the fire of inflammation in the body so the immune system can be restored, heal the damage of the inflammation, then go back to restoring normal health, which is what, that's what earthing is about. That's what grounding is about. Grounding is an electrical term, unfortunately. Um, and in the body, it's an electrical term because when you ground the body, you, you do the same thing that you do for the electrical industry. I mean, you want electrical stability in, in, a, in a computer or an electrical device. So you connect it to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability. Well, the body is electrical. Everything on the body, every single cell in the body is electrical. Every function in the body is electrical. So what we're doing is we're actually doing the same thing. We ground the body to the earth, floods the body with free electrons. That holds the body electrically stable because now you have a resource to reduce any of these uh, reactive oxygen molecules that otherwise oxidize healthy tissue. So electrical stability is what we're talking about. We're trying to maintain the body electrically stable so the immune system can return to normal. The immune system uh, operates electrically. That's a strange term to the medical industry, but radicals, they re the immune system releases oxidative radicals. The word oxidative means it has an electron imbalance or a shortage of electrons. So therefore it is electrically charged. 
And what we want to do here, the electrical charge is necessary to burn up pathogen and, and damage cells, but any excess will damage healthy cells. That's why you have to be grounded so that those excess radicals are instantly, and I'm talking about in nanoseconds, like 10, 20 nanoseconds, they have to be reduced. Otherwise they're going to do damage in the body. That's what grounding is about. This other stuff is nonsense. Absolutely. Right. We have that. We did have uh, George over in Ireland checking in with us again. Uh, so he forgot to mention earlier that he was driving yesterday for nearly five hours with just a short break at a service station but he did have a grounded universal mat on the car seat with him. He said he was fresh as a daisy when he arrived home in Kilkenny. So just wanted to let us know it's a super product for long distance drives there. Yep, yep. All right, and then uh, the next question that we do have is uh, another one we do get quite often uh, from Catherine asking if um, earthing would be uh, very beneficial for someone who's had rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis for 30 years. And if you have had it for that long, would it take longer potentially to see benefits in someone with shorter term issues? Um, we're working on, I mean, one of the stories in the, the earthing book, uh, one of the early stories uh, about one time I was invited with a hospice worker to go and see a gentleman that lived up in Ventura or Ojai, California. And, and when you go to hospice, normally they don't expect you to live six months. Anyhow, this gentleman had the worst arthritis I had ever seen. His, his whole body was on fire and his elbows, wrists, fingers, everything was gnarled and just, I mean, in order to, for us to, put a ground pad on his bed. His daughter came over, we had a nurse and we had a, another gentleman and it took all of us to take him off the bed, set him in a chair, remake the bed, explain to him what we were doing and then put him back in bed. <clears throat> but anyhow, a couple of days later, he called up or I think we checked on him and the hospice worker said, he, he said that the gentleman said, I no longer feel like I have disease in my body, meaning the ground had put out the fire. Okay, then about a week or 10 days later, I actually got a call from this gentleman. Now, this man could not have gotten out of bed before this. I actually got a call from him, and he said, my ground isn't working anymore. I said, he said, I went outdoors, and the squirrel had eaten through the wire. And I tried to fix it, but I can't fix it. And I wanted to know if you would come back and fix it. And I said, if you're out standing by that tree, I'm going to be there because I want to see what you're doing. And I went back there uh, the next day and his daughter was there and he was at the, at the door. He was moving very, very slow, but he wasn't in pain. He could move. And so that story is for this lady. And he That's lived six years, six years longer than I know of. It's a fantastic story. Yeah, we do have another question here. Uh, this is actually a product question for you, asking if we have any plans to bring back the grounded tummy band again. Uh, yes, I think they just ordered a few thousand of those, so it should be in about three or four months. Right. And we have another one here. Uh, this is actually a materials question. Asking for covering the grounding pillowcase, would a real silk pillowcase be as effective as cotton? Um, it's a natural fiber there. Real silk is, how do I say, what's the right word? Hydro, Hydro I mean, it, it accepts water. Okay. Yeah, it's um, so hydrophilic. hydrophilic kind of yeah, hydrophilic. So uh, I think it would, if it's real silk. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Ryan, we are getting close to the end here. We will just be taking a few more questions. Uh, we do have another question here. Oh, she's getting wound up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can keep going if you like. No. Uh, <laughs> we have our, uh, our next question here, we do have coming in asking if you do put the patches on your hands, can you wash your hands or do you need to take the patches off first? I think that also would count for getting in the shower with patches on too. 
Well, <clears throat> you can put the patch on no matter what. I mean, um, it's if, if they come off easily, then you probably want to wash the skin and wash the oil off before you put them on. <clears throat> but if your skin is dry, then you don't want to make it any drier because then it's hard to get the patches off. So you just kind of have to play with it. But uh, I've used the patches sometimes two or three days at a time, take a shower with it, whatever. Uh, but oh, no. I, don't, I don't advise anybody using leaving a patch on more than two days at a time. Rep put a new one on and reposition it so that you don't get any irritation from the patch. But yeah, you can wash them. You can wash your hands. You can do anything. And I think we want to end up on this question here. So I know we get a lot of questions about sleep. This is a bit different asking if earthing can reduce the amount of sleep that is needed. No, um, I don't think it has anything to do with earthing doing that. I think um, <clears throat> it's about recovery. Uh, when you go to bed at night, if you're if you don't sleep well, that means you have elevated cortisol. That means you have inflammation, pain, you know, various other things, anxiety, and so on. So <clears throat> when you get grounded, if you don't sleep as long as you would otherwise, and you get up and you have the same amount of energy, so it means that you recovered in a shorter period of time. But I, I think it's really uh, Younger people, that's one thing, but older people, you, you still need that eight hours at least. And, um, um, but yeah, the, the quality of your sleep will uh, depend on the health of your body, the body, the, the amount of time the body needs to recover and repair. So it's, a, it's an immune thing. It's not about what we think or what we, it's, it's about health. I think that should just about do it. And so, of course, I did want to say, as always, Clint, thank you so much for joining us here today to answer these questions for us. Uh, thank you, everybody who joined us on Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook for submitting your questions and helping to educate yourselves about the benefits of grounding. I do apologize we were not able to get to all the questions. We did get quite a few of those, but make sure to join us next week and get here early so we can get those in front of Clint right away. Uh, if you haven't done so already, we do highly recommend that you follow us on social media as well as subscribe to our email newsletter just to make sure you're in the loop regarding any of our upcoming sales, webinars, new product announcements, announcements, and many more. And also, you can find our Earthing YouTube channel where you can find every single Earthing Live recording up there as well as some other supplementary information as well. And so once again, just want to say, Clint, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, everyone yeah. out there. You bet. We'll Take see care. You again next week. I enjoy it. Take care. Bye.